All right, so page seven. I forgot to number the last page, but this is section five of the computer system notes, and we're going to talk about cache memory. Um, <clears throat> in the lab, the processor only runs at 100 megahertz, uh, and we use SRAM, so the memory is able to keep up with the processor, but in general computer systems, you got processors that are running at say two to four gigahertz, and you got these large um, DRAM modules, and so they're they're not able to keep up. So, um, oh yeah, so the text reference here is section 19 of the online text from Douglas Harder. All right, so um, main memory. These features are that it is large, but it has high latency. So I've used this term before. Latency means the time from when you request the data until you start to get it. So on a hard disk, it's from the, the time of the request until you get like the first byte back of the sector that you've re requested. Um, and so the latency tends to be in the order of hundreds of cycles. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so if you think about a processor that's got a four gigahertz, four gigahertz clock rate, uh, and you got a memory that takes uh, 100 nanoseconds to respond before the controller responds to a request from the processor, then you could be waiting 400 clock cycles say for an instruction to come uh, from memory. And that is uh, a fairly accurate or realistic number these days. So obviously it's not good if you're having to wait um, for 99.75% of the time for the next instruction to come from memory. Um, the other good thing about um, the main memory though is that it does have high bandwidth. So if you uh, request large blocks, large chunks of data, so say 64 bytes instead of just like four bytes, uh, once it starts giving you the data, those 64 bytes come very quickly, uh, maybe in one or two uh, clock cycles. All right, so now we've got caches. Um, and caches are, uh, they're small but they have low latency. Um, and I guess you could say high bandwidth. I'm gonna leave that off. And what they do is they store a subset of the main memory. So there's this thing called the cache controller, which is built into the cache. So the cache has storage, and then it's got this controller. And the processor talks to the cache controller and says, hey, give me the data at address X. And the cache controller says, do I have that? If I do, it gives it back right away. If it doesn't, it goes to the main memory and says, hey, give me the data at address X. Um, now, so before I get into the operation of it, um, the, the principles that it works on, there, there's two of them. So the first one, I'll write this in green, is called uh, temporal locality. So if you just think about that phrase, it has to do with time and things being close together. So if you access, uh, say, an instruction or a piece of data once, there's a good probability that your processor is going to be accessing the same thing again very soon. So take a minute to try and think like, when would that occur? Um, an example would be if you're executing a loop, uh, then you're likely to execute the same instructions multiple times. So it's a good thing to keep them around. Uh, and data does tend to be reused a lot too. So like you, you'll read a variable, you'll do some computations, you'll update that variable. So that's temporal locality. So um, <clears throat> the data 
or instructions at the same address get reused. So you run, you know, you execute the instruction once, you're probably going to want to run it again. Um, and then the other, the other uh, principle is spatial locality. So things that are close together in memory. So I, I guess literally they're close together um, on the silicon, but uh, f for us, you know, they're they're close to the same address. So data or instructions um, from nearby addresses are needed. Okay, so now let's um, let's just look at a you know a, a diagram to to show this in action. So we have our processor. I'm just going to add the label out here so I can put stuff inside it, and it's got a register, and the default data size on a processor is called the word size. So if you got a 32-bit processor, um, such as the ARM, then it's going to be, a th yeah, we're going to be dealing with 32-bit words. And so the processor um, wants to load the data uh, that we'll just call C. So is that some uh, address? And so what it's going to do is it's going to talk to the cache. And so here we have the cache. Whoops. The symbol for the cache, funny enough, is the dollar sign. And so we're going to look inside the cache. And the cache stores... Um, not just individual words from the main memory, but it stores um, what are called cache lines or blocks from memory. So uh, a collection of contiguous bytes from memory. So that might be 64 bytes, uh, 32 bytes. It depends on, on the cache. So the cache controller is going to check. So I've got one line there, or one row of the cache. We're going to check and it's going to say, do I, do I have the, ad, you know, the, the data from address C? And if it doesn't, then it is going to go down to your main memory. And your main memory is bigger. And your main memory, it's got its own complex organization, but from the outside, it's just this array of bytes. So you give it an address and it, it will return a bunch of bytes starting at that address. And so I'm going to represent there being two blocks in main memory, two forward blocks. And I'm going to say that we've got these, these values stored in memory, A, B, C, and D. Each of those is a word, and that's one block, and E, F, G, and H are the next block. So each of these, so this is a, a word of data, and the whole thing is called a block or a line. And I should label this whole thing. So this is the main memory. So the cache controller said, oh, I don't have the data at address C. And it keeps a little bit of the address information. It's called tagging, so that it knows the data that's stored in the cache where it came from. So it says, no, I don't have data at that address. So it goes to the main memory and says, hey, give me the block. And it doesn't ask for the block starting at C. The blocks always have to be aligned to the, to the size of the block. So it'll get A, B, C, and D. 
And so let's do that in, uh, I don't know, let's say gold, whatever color this is going to give me. So this comes back up here and we load A, B, C, and D into the cache. And then C gets forwarded by the cache controller to the processor. Now, so there's there's two advantages to this. So we're, we're loading larger chunks of data from the main memory into the cache. So we're taking advantage of the, the bandwidth of the main memory, trying to overcome that latency. And so hopefully, you know, if, we've, if we need to see once, hopefully the processor is going to need it again soon. So the next time it goes to load C, it'll check with the cache and voila, it's there and it gets it back right away. Maybe two cycles, maybe four cycles, about say a hundred times faster than if it had to go to main memory. Uh, and then maybe it's going to need, maybe it's going through an array. So C was the start of an array and next it's going to want the next element, which is item D here. So we'll request D and it's got that. So taking advantage of the temporal locality and the spatial locality. All right.